So here in Los Angeles, we're fortunate to have a company who collects and will deliver real ocean water. How can you get any better than that? And certainly, how could you get any more convenient? We have 600 gallons delivered every two weeks. This water has been pre-filtered of its sediment, run through a protein skimmer, and buffered. So the alternative to real ocean water, if you don't have access to it or your local store doesn't carry it, would be to make your own salt water from a synthetic salt mix. Today we're going to do that. We're going to make 300 here and another 300 gallons of synthetic seawater. And really it's just about as easy as baking a cake. Uh, the issues that are involved are the quality of the fresh water as the base ingredient in the salt water. And number two, the, the brand of salt. And it's not so much the brand specifically um, as it is the consistency in the, the mix and how easily it dissolves. So in my situation today, we're going to use faucet water, uh, but we're going to carbon filter it. Actually, we're going to mechanically trap some of the particles out in that uh, spun or woven pleated inside there. There's also activated carbon in there. So we're removing the particulate or particles that come with the faucet water. Uh, we're also going to be removing organic compounds and heavy metals such as copper, iron, uh, things such as that that uh, come with the uh, city water. There are some elements that we can't remove with carbon filtration, um, but I don't see this as being a problem. Now, actually, the biggest problem is going to be monitoring the container so it doesn't overflow. And if I know me, I'll walk away from it and it'll be about five minutes after it's overflowing that I remember that it's still running out here. So that's going to be my biggest challenge. Now let's talk about the salt itself. As I mentioned, the brand is not necessarily the issue. It's whatever impresses you the most. Uh, this particular brand, I believe, is the result of dehydrated uh, salt water. Uh, so it's got natural elements in there. Uh, sort of the same advantages of real ocean water. Uh, it's the real thing. Uh, there are some other more chemically produced synthetic sea salts that are comprised of um, clean basic chemicals that they mix together that gives the same principles or, or equality to seawater. But again, it's made of generic type chemicals. All of them work. Otherwise, they wouldn't be manufacturing them. Uh, for me, uh, through a little bit of reputation and the statement that this particular salt dissolves quickly, this was my reason for selecting this. Now, when you purchase your synthetic salt mix, it'll come to you in increments. There, for example, in this case of three, three bags, each bag makes 50 gallons. So if I add this amount of synthetic sea mix to 50 Fresh gallons water. of water, I will make 50 gallons of seawater. This bucket down here makes 200 gallons. So I need to make 300 gallons, so we're going to use the bucket plus two of these bags into 300 gallons of fresh water. We're going to then mix it up. We'll use what's called a hydrometer to determine the right salinity or the amount of salt within the water. So we'll use our handy dandy pocket knife that we borrowed from Jack the Pocket Knife Guy. Cut open the bags. Two of the bags will make 50 gallons each. We're also going to take and pour in one of the large buckets of 200 gallon mix. This bucket holds a large bag that protects the salt from moisture. You can see here how clean and granular the salt mix actually is. So we'll lift this up and pour it in as well. Now I did mention that it's as easy as baking a cake. And like baking a cake, 
before making the batter, you have to mix it up. I'm going to use my sump pump here inside this big 300 gallon container to circulate the water within that container to help allow that salt to completely dissolve because I'm not going to be able to get an accurate salinity reading until all the salts dissolve bottom to top of the container. And as you can see, the water is moving around quite well inside there. It's being pumped by the sump pump from the bottom of the container all the way up to the surface and it'll continue to circulate all that water around and around and around until all the salts dissolve. You'll know it's dissolved because the water will become clear and you won't see any of the undissolved salt in the water. And actually, this is filling up quite fast, so we need to start paying a little more attention here. And to determine the amount of salt within the water, or what they refer to as the density of the water, we're going to use a hydrometer to determine that. There's a few different versions. There's this real simple version that just has a needle that floats inside a little box, and depending upon the density, that needle will float up to a certain point. This is the least expensive and probably the simplest to use. The next on the list would be a glass floating hydrometer that has a tall marked stem. You would float this in the water and depending upon the amount or the density of the water, it'll float to a certain point and you would match where the surface meets the calibrated uh, tall narrow net to determine the salinity. One of the real slick things about using this is you can fill the tube that it comes in with water and then float the hydrometer inside there. It's a little bit more convenient. The third would be a real fancy refractometer that uses light and such, and I assume it, it determines the salinity by based on a color density. Uh, too complicated uh, and too expensive for my needs. So we've begun to fill the second container with the purified fresh water while we're allowing the salt to dissolve with the help of the sump pump in the first container. And as you can see, uh, the clarity of the water is beginning to improve, which means the salt uh, is beginning to dissolve. You can see the sump pump sitting down there at the bottom of the 300 gallon container. And then over here, we're starting to fill our next 300 gallon container, again, using the carbon filtered water. So we might as well get that salt mix in there as well. water. Both containers now have salt, synthetic salt mix deposited into them. This unit here has got the sump pump in it, mixing it up. We're going to go ahead and move it to the other one now to begin to mix that up, allow this to dissolve a bit more, and then we'll go back and mix this one up again. There is one small issue with using these type of sump pumps or submersible pumps. That is because their power cord is really their only anchor. And as that pump, or if the pump, begins to spin, it can easily twist that power cord, thus dramatically shortening its lifespan and possibly bringing a shocking conclusion to mine. Or at the very least, a surprising response. So join us for part two as we show you how to use a hydrometer after all the salt has dissolved and we're ready to test it to see where the salinity is.